say a little bit about uh, the poetry of the country that Alani comes from, Slovakia. Uh, briefly, some of the uh, poets should be a lot better known. Uh, Slovakia has got definitely the best anti-war poet from the beginning of World War I. From the end of World War I, there are lots of famous poets like uh, Wilfred Owen. I'm not making any comparisons with those. But from the beginning of the war, easily the most impressive anti-war performance was uh, by a man called Pavel Orsay Fyuseslav. Mm -hmm. And um, following that, uh, there are two uh, uh, 20th century poets whom I have translated. One of them, uh, some of you were at a launch of mine about um, 15, 13 years ago here in Dublin uh, when I launched a, tr uh, a book of selections from Ladislav Novomesky. He was uh, a child of the First World War, definitely, mentally, spiritually. He, um, uh, he was uh, a man of radical politics and uh, he uh, believed in progress and he tried to fit the belief in progress with the belief in the human being. Uh, later in the 20th century uh, came a man called Milan Rufus, who uh, also who believed very much in the human being. He didn't really believe in progress. Um, I have also translated selections from him. Eleni comes to a similar theme uh, in her own way. She comes to the question uh, from a different generation and with different machines. Hers are uh, not so huge, not so monstrous. They're, uh, they're more, they seem more friendly, but they come up closer. They're more seductive. Um, my um, power presses were not seductive at all. Uh, anyhow, that's enough really from me. Just out of interest, how many of you speak for <laughs> We're working on English around here. Okay, so. Because we were just wondering whether we should read in Slovak as well. I suppose. Yes. I'm nice to hear it. You want to hear it? It's lovely. Please do. Okay. Yes. Um, so I, I don't want to torture you with a language you don't understand, but um, I'm tortured with the dictionary. I think to hear the sound of it might be useful when you then listen to the rhythm of the English translation. So this is the poem Josef Mack. Yes, tu je krajina w której ludzie raniają wiadomości, obedują pocity, a na wieczoru si o domu z wspomnieniem. W tej krainie żyją ludzie, którzy siedzą na jawni lupienok, a hadają, kolko może asi ważyć. Drugi zaś dumają, jak by go mogli spełniać. Trzeci jeden stoja, a nie wie, jak się za wszystko tu krasu odwieczyć. A wszyscy przyjdą do ciebie, wspomnieć i prazni wróżą. Tak co robi ten człowiek człowiekom? Co na drugą brzegu zaważy? Zastonał zwon na kostolnej weży. Przyznałaś, że nie jest więc, ako jeden niedozredny klas, jedno zrnko, co zasadzi zaraz. Z tużbami wysoko w gwiazdach, obyczajny Józef Mak. Now the English version. Um, you'll hear that. Um, John managed to find a rhyme with the personal name Joseph Mack, which uh, I thought was quite remarkable. So. Joseph Mack. There is a land where people breakfast on knowledge, lunch on feelings, and break off bits of memory for supper. Some who live in that land look at the springtime bud and guess how much it may weigh. Others ponder how to turn it into money. Others again stand still, not knowing how to give thanks for all that beauty. And all will arrive at the goal, with bellies empty or full. So man, what makes you man? What counts on the other shore? On a church tower, a bell has grown. You acknowledge you are no more than a single, unripe ear, a grain to be sown in the earth again, with desires 
High as the star struck, the ordinary Joseph Mark. Postcard without a stamp. The SMS rolls over hills and through seas, enclosing puffed up expectations. From hand to hand, as in olden days, it brings joy and disillusion and fits experience's colors into a phrase. Darling, how I miss you here. I send you long distance love with just one finger, no stain, no crown. A digital postcard without the exotic stamp. <laughs>